Malabar plane. Terrified members of the Knowles family claimed a bright flying object sucked their car off the ground. It was early yesterday morning when the Knowles family had their close encounter on the Nullarbor Plain. About halfway between Melbourne and Perth, their blue Ford Telstar was chased by what they told police was an extremely bright white light. The egg-shaped object hovered above the car, lifting it more than a metre off the ground. Police at Seduna in South Australia were today at a loss to explain the sighting. The sun. Samples of ash taken from the Knowles car have been sent to police forensic scientists for study. So far, the results of those tests are unknown. Tony Coughlin, Eyewitness News. A head mash and a lead... Bizarre kind. A Perth family claims it's been confronted by a UFO while crossing the Nullarbor. Their story's been backed by other motorists and the crew of two South Australian fishing boats have also reported being buzzed by a UFO. Faye Knowles and her three sons claim an orange blob picked their car up off the highway. They fled in terror into the scrub until the object disappeared. For the Knowles family, it was to have been a routine drive across the Nullarbor. That all changed as the family approached the town of Mundrabilla on the air highway. They claim that's when they had their unexpected and terrifying encounter with the unknown. The car was shaking. Um, I wind down the window and I said it's on top of the roof. And all this, I don't know what it was, it all come inside the car like smoke. We thought we were all dead. And I went down my window and mum said there's something on the roof. And I said, no, come off it, you know, you've got to be joking. And she went down her window and she put her hand on the, on the roof and she goes, my God, and she goes, what is it? And I went, no, I swear to God, I'm not lying. I swear to God, I opened up my window and the car started going out of control. And all this smoke and it was like smoke. I'm not, I'm not lying, it was like smoke. And gases all started coming to car. And me and my brother started to go crazy, you know. I thought it was going in my head. Felt like my brain was getting sucked out. Another motorist and a truck driver also witnessed the incident. They confirmed the Knowles family story. Police are investigating the claim. They say the car did have dents on the roof and an ash substance inside. Late today, the Knowles family returned to the scene of their experience for the last time. And uh, you won't travel that stretch of road again? No way. You, you, don't, even, you don't even wish to travel in your own car. No. Rod Stephen, 7 News. It was not a star, but could not identify what it was. Later, inland at Mundrabilla Roadhouse, near the West Australian, South Australian border, a truck driver reported that he had also seen an incredible light in the sky. At 5.30 yesterday morning, a West Australian family of four travelling east say a UFO landed on their car. They were travelling at 200 kilometres an hour at the time. The object was emitting an extremely bright light. And they were travelling in the same area as the previous sightings. In a moment I'll talk with the family, but first, Emily Booker with this report on the strange goings-on in that part of Australia. History is dotted with strange lights and reported visits to Earth of UFOs. Australia itself records 180 sightings a year, and although 92% of these turn out to be planes, clouds or some other natural phenomenon, 8% are never explained. And it is the skies to the west and south of this vast continent which have played host most frequently to the suspected flying saucers. What was your reaction when you saw the light for the first time? It's a funny sensation. You, you, know, you feel the hairs and your legs sort of curling and your heart beating at about a million things per second and your arms and legs sort of don't want to move. So, um, what was it? <laughs> I don't know. These tough Aussie truckies are the last people you'd expect to believe in UFOs but these pictures record their terrifying encounter. It was virtually on the ground at the first sighting, first and uh, it was there until Monty took that last, last photograph. 
and, uh, and, and then it appeared to move off. For the Port Neal community in South Australia, the visit of a UFO wasn't confined to the skies. Whatever the object was, there's no doubt from these pictures that it landed on the Rodder's property. There's something that's causing these things that we can't explain, so why not believe in the <laughs> Now the UFOs have disturbed the peace of the southwestern skies yet again. The Knowles family of Perth were in their car heading across the Nullarbor Plain when a bright light appeared above them, picked up their car and dropped it. Well, to the Knowles family in Adelaide, thanks for joining us. And 36 hours now after the event, do any of you have any doubts as to what happened? Do you still believe that it was a UFO that landed on your car? Yes, we do. Why do you believe that? Because we actually saw it, you know, it was chasing us. And it, all of a sudden it landed on our car, we pulled our car back. And I put my hand out the window and I, I fell on the roof. What did, Just, you, what did you feel? It was like a um, sponge on the roof, it was sucking the roof, you know, the car. It was a sponge. I saw it. How big was it? What did it look it was like? About, I don't really know, I can't really explain. Did you see anything but a light? Um, no, not really. It was a. Uh, I can't explain it. Uh, it was sort of. It was shaped like this. Hang on. It was shaped like this. It had like a little circle in the centre, and that was like a yellow sort of colour. And it had on the outsides. It was sort of shaped like that, and on the outsides it was like that, and in the centre it was like that. And I asked me, Beretta, you know, if that was a spaceship, and he goes, don't be stupid. So I got up closer to have a look, and it was moving backwards and forwards. And so we decide to take off to have a look. We decide to take off, and it was flying miles back, and... I drove miles up the road again, and it was in front of us again. How, how high off the ground was it? It was, it was on the ground. I mean, it was on the ground. It was on the ground, facing us when we were driving along. And then, so it was moving along with you? Yeah, it was following us. And then eventually, you tried to get away from it. Is that right? It's still chasing us. Sean you, Sean, you were driving. How fast did you get up to? I got up to about 200 kilometres. That's very fast. Have you driven that fast before? I uh, know, I haven't. And the car is capable of doing 200 yeah, kilometres an hour? Is. Yeah. And at what stage did the object land on your roof? Oh. How fast were you going at the time? I was doing about 200. I got a blowout. And once the car stopped, I blinked out. And I don't know what happened after that. It was definitely on the roof. How do we know you're telling the truth? I know it was even witnesses. Well, you, but you, a lot of people think that you are making it up. Do you realise that? That's not true. No way. When it landed on the car, what, what happened? We what were was screaming and yelling. And as soon as it landed on the car, that's when my tyre blew out. Smoke started coming in the car. The smoke like started to come in the car. Probably like the only thing. And that's when I just blanked out. There was so one report that your voices changed, is that correct? Yes, yes. they did. They did. In what way? Oh, um, really deep and deep. slow and I don't know. We started sound like that. Can like you... it, real deep. Deeper than that even. It was so deep you know, it's really hard to explain. More or less like our voice kind of died out as we were talking. If a car has a blowout at 200 kilometres an hour, there is a danger, isn't it, that it will overturn? How That's come you right. didn't? <laughs> there was a weight on the roof. And explain that. Was the car on the road at all times, or was it lifted off, as has been reported? We don't really know, but we think it has been lifted off the road. How long did it... Uh, how long was it with you, this object? For about five or ten minutes, we think. Were there any sounds or smells? Yes, yeah, there was. There was a sound, 
It sounded like a humming sound. It sounded like boom, boom, boom. And, and uh, when it was on the roof, I went down my window and all this smoke started coming. It was like a greyish black mist. And that's when our voices started to change. All of us, our voices just went really deep and strange. And we found like, we felt like we were dying. And uh, the brake, my brother chucked the brakes on the car and this thing just shot off. And as it shot off, we just hid out in the bushes, got out the car, hid out in the bushes, waited for about 10, 15 minutes. Went over back to the car, took, this, took the wheel off, chucked that in the boot, got the spare wheel out, put that on. And we just let down Jack. We didn't worry about Jack, we just chucked the Jack in the bushes and we just shot off. And then it started to follow us again. And it started to come day by then it was starting to get daylight. And it just seemed to lose us for some reason. We turned the headlights off and that's when it lost us. Patrick, had any of you been drinking? No, no way, no. Were you tired? I was a bit tired, yeah, but not tired enough to <laughs> see a <laughs> thing like that. And How scared were you, Patrick? I oh, really scared. Terrified. Scared as I've ever been. Well, what was your feelings? What were you feeling at the time when this was all we're happening? We were going to die. <laughs> that's what I felt like we just made us feel like we're dying. Have you had any unusual feelings since it happened? Oh, a bit sick or was I won't, I won't turn the lights off at night. I'm too scared to go to sleep. Any other feelings? What about you, Wayne? How do you feel about it all? Pretty scary, right? What was the worst part of it for you? Mm. you wouldn't, would you be happy to go back there and have a look around to see what had happened? Not really. I don't want to go back. So just, just summing up, do any of you have any idea, uh, uh, Wayne, uh, Sean, you think it was a, a spaceship. What about yourself, Mrs Knowles? Do you have any ideas? I, I reckon it was a BFO or something, you know, because it was strange. It was following us everywhere. We wouldn't leave us alone. I was a nervous wreck when I got up to the garage. So. Well, thank you very much for telling us your story and uh, take it easy on the roads. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.